Good luck. So I think I think I'm gonna go back to playing fourth foul rook a bit more. Um, so here I'm aiming at the head of these generals with the intent of promoting on the square right in front of them. Let me see, is my opponent intending? I'm trying to guess the shape of my opponent's structure here. Um, okay. Yeah, let's play Mino Castle. I've played Anaguma quite a few times. Um, we're going to play Mino today. And to protect against um, him breaking on this file, we're going to put the bishop up there. Right, so this is where they intend um, the climbing silver attack. Ah, but it approaches from this side. Okay, so if I should ex offer a bishop exchange, I don't think this is a great opportunity for that. Um, hmm. <laughs> I mean, where would my bishop even go? On the other hand, if I play my gold to uh, five two here, then if silver climbs, if I kick the silver, he pushes, I take the silver, he takes my pawn. Well, that should be fine. I think this is okay. Oh, right. That's right. I've seen this before. Um, yeah, so the idea is that I need to protect a head of my bishop here. Or maybe I just need to start forcing exchanges, but this is risky. Um, because of the goal, uh, rook promotion on my back rank. Um, I've been here before. I should know this by now, and I don't. And eventually I will learn, but for now, I'm in trouble. Um, Well, to some degree, I have to believe in myself. And if this is what I envisioned, it can't be entirely wrong. I don't completely trust it, but um, there has to be something right, even if this might be wrong. Okay, so the next thing I envision is using this knight on the side. and bringing my bishop onto this diagonal and attacking stuff. Like, I understand that my bishop in this corner, having taken the lance, would get my bishop trapped. I've done that a few times. It's been quite painful. So that's not really the idea here.
Okay, this is an interesting idea. Is it thematic? I'm not sure. Well, looks like we have a mutual attack situation on our hands. My rook was blocked by my pawn anyway, and I'm kind of happy having the horse so close to attacking his king. Um, there is a material problem here in that I'm sacrificing a rook, but what's a rook going to do against my king anyway? Okay. Perhaps I miscalculated? Or misread this? I'm not sure. Sitting and thinking more isn't going to change what's already happened. By allowing the bishop drop, I've kind of committed to this mutual attack situation. Um, bishops are great in the opening. They are, for sure. Um, and a horse is a wonderful piece to have in defense. Um, so we're going to defend. And now my other bishop can step onto this diagonal, and we could have some fun attacking stuff, too. My fourth file, rook idea, might have been... Um, I'm missing the word for it. Thwarted. My idea of trying to promote a pawn and attack the head of these generals didn't quite work the way I'd originally planned. But this seems okay. So he's faced with the dilemma of, does he attack my horse by dropping his rook? Uh, there's a couple ways he could try to do that. Or, um, does uh, he move this pawn and just commit to trying to break on this file? Um, or there's a third option, which I didn't anticipate. Um... That traps his rook. Like, so I've got these squares on each side of the rook covered. My general here is defended. So if I just plunk this down right here, I win a rook. Um, 
I don't think that was his plan. The most he can get for the rook is taking my gold. Um. I think what he'd read out is that if I brought my gold back, he could have taken my lance. Um, and so therefore, like, his rook wasn't trapped that way. This bishop drop is kind of unusual because now my bishop's kind of a target. Um, right, so my horse is a bit of a target too. But that's easily enough addressed by just retreating the horse one way or the other. Um, now, if I put my horse on this square, taking the pawn, uh, he can exchange his rook for it. And we get into a crazy mutual attack, which actually isn't that bad. Um, yeah, so... Here I threatened to take the lance, and I threatened to take the gold. And I have a rook drop, so... Um, I don't think that this exchange is what he wants to do right now. This rook drop could be uh, devastating. Right, so... Uh, instead, we have to retreat one score at a time, but now he's out of pawns. Uh, interesting. I missed this, though. So if I go directly back... Um, oh, he doesn't have any way to hit the head of my horse. But I could also go diagonally back, and, but then be prone to this pawn attack. Um, yeah, where do I retreat? It's just a matter of reading things correctly. And remembering the Nifu rule. <laughs> Wouldn't want to mess that up. Um, so if I block my edge file, then I can push this pawn on my bishop's head and duck behind it. If I go back this way, then I have to move either this pawn or my knight to escape. Um, but yeah, pushing my edge pawn to escape is not terrible. I go directly back, he pushes the edge pawn, threatening to bring his gold forward. Even if the gold comes forward, it's nothing to fear. Well, the gold could move sideways to hit my pawn here. I don't really have a counter to that. Um, this is so weird. Such an unfamiliar position. Okay, I'm gonna duck behind my rook, uh, behind my edge pawn. It's difficult for me to get out of the ha habit of saying rook pawn. This is an edge pawn. The rook pawn is the one in front of the rook. This isn't chess where the edge file is also the rook file. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to duck behind my edge pawn if I have to. So if the knight approaches, um, then I have a rook drop.
but also I might have a knight move which is like super aggressive but I might have that too I think right now my only plan is this rook drop, but I don't see an effective counter to it. If he goes back to the third file, then I can move my knight forward, um, although I don't have an immediate follow-up or continuation. Um, So yeah, he's certainly disrupted my position. Okay, that does stop the rook drop. I'm curious though, so what's going to keep my bishop out of the center square? If I push this pawn, well, and then I'm threatening to take here, and then I can start dropping more pawns on this file. Um, I guess what stops that is when one of his generals takes there, and then I drop another pawn and the general comes forward. pieces are so awkward here. I need to give my knight um, a space to breathe. So what I don't like about this is that the pawn gets in the way of my of protecting this square of uh, five seven. So I can't directly promote on 5-7. Um, dismiss discord uh, let's see
Let's see. I'm being offered a match at 14.30 UTC tomorrow, which in my time zone, yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, so, um, yeah, I want, I need to give my knight a space to go, a space to run to. Oh, wow, that's gutsy. Um, what's so gutsy about this? Uh, yes, it does certainly gain a tempo, um, but it allows me to chop down the pawn in the center. Like, why should I not take that? From here, I control the square where my rook can drop, and I allow my knight access to the center square, too. And, uh, like, this supports additional pawn drops in the center. So... Yeah, I'm definitely attacking at this point. <laughs> well, it might not be an octopus in the middle of the board, but yeah, we got something going on. Uh, now I know, like with Twitch, that's the whole squid emote thing, but yeah. Having a horse that's unopposed like that is a really cool geometric effect, if nothing else. But something tells me uh, it's also a good luck charm. What I don't really like about this is that he could play his rook to the fourth file immediately, and things get super tactical. Um, I don't really want to rook exchange, I don't really want anything to accelerate here. So, like, the moves I'm most inclined to play just block my knight from moving again. Um, a curious geometry there. Um, I could just move the knight up. Um, there's obvious risks there, but like, he could pawn drop on my knight's head and I'd take the silver. Or he could advance the silver to hit the knight a second time and then it's pinned to my gold. And uh, What a mess. Um, so yeah, the most natural move is just pawn drop right in front of my generals. Um, which is not very pleasant to do. I would rather attack. But yeah, I think I can't allow this rook to invade. Now this encourages a pawn drop square in front of my pawn, but then I plan to bring up my knight. And then pawn takes pawn to support my if, knight if necessary. So that's one plan. Another plan is if he drops on the head of my pawn, I don't know, I take it, rook takes, and then I pawn drop again. Uh, and he does this, this... Oh, he can't pick this side pawn up. Never mind. Yeah, and then his rook just retreats back to Nowhereville. Um, so, yeah, maybe I could have dropped up one more file to support an aggressive knight move. Um instead of playing this extremely conservative thing. So 
so I'm currently threatening horse takes knight. Um, so he might actually not drop the pawn here. He might give up on dreams of promoting his rook right now. We'll find out. But yeah, I appreciated in yesterday's lecture by Shogi Harbor, or lesson, um, she had explained uh, Fugiere, this situation of like, oh no, I don't have a pawn in hand and I'm never going to get one. Um, meaning it's very difficult to initiate an attack if you can't sacrifice a pawn. So my opponent does have one pawn in hand, but I don't think one pawn is going to be enough for them to launch a really large attack here. I think their attack is finally running out, and soon it will be my turn to like place my rook and start advancing my pieces. Um, but yeah, the general concept that like if you can prevent your opponent from having pawns in hand, um, your position gets safer. That's uh, a nice uh, shogi proverb. So yeah, they have to pick if they're going to defend or attack at this point. I don't know what I would do. I really don't. But what I want to do for my attack is bring the knight forward twice and promote it right in front of them. Or now that they've lined up this fork, just knight without promotion and then take the rook. All of that looks tempting. They did prevent, uh, prevent me from capturing this here. So there is some good in that, in their play here. But um, yeah, my knight aggression seems hard to deal with. Well, they just bring up their silver, but then I take this. Or rather, they move this silver to defend my attack. Dealing with both prongs of my attack, that I would be hitting this silver and this promotion square. They can deal with both of those at once. And even though I can take the lance, well, the silver traps, but then I can rook drop to take out the silver. Yeah, I think I have a very strong attack here. I'm curious. I need to know. So I'm simultaneously threatening to take this silver, to move my knight up, and my third prong of the attack is to just take this out here, threatening a rook drop right next to the king. Um, so I have a lance in hand. I really didn't expect them to do that, especially not so quickly. Um, but we're both in time pressure. I mean, what are they going to do against this attack? I need to know. So I'm forking the knight and the lance. I'm also threatening the lance drop to hit the rook to win the silver. I'm 
also threatening a lance drop here to just accelerate my attack. Um, but a silver would also accelerate it. Okay, they're running away. I can't put pawns on any file on this board. Yeah, we're both in time pressure. Um, okay, I'm going to fork the gold and the knight. Next, I think I just take this knight threatening the silver drop. Okay, this does not trap their gold, does it? Well, if nothing else, I can get another tempo out of attacking that gold. Um, but, well, yeah, and I don't want that just hovering around my base, around my camp. So back off gold. Also, I like how this is starting to influence toward the king. Um, possibly I might, if they push this pawn, I might take this knight and then take the gold and then take the silver in some order. Um, or I might just, uh, horse takes this straight away. Um, I kind of like my horse. Okay. Just how many things can I attack at once? Let's find out.
30秒40秒I'm just going to take the free knight that I can use to accelerate my attack a bit. There's a mate in one threat. Okay, so they've broken up their castle. So I think the next play is to pawn drop on the gold's head. Although, yeah, it just makes me feel comfortable to do that. It doesn't actually help me. I don't like the fact that this gold is just lurking here. It's extremely annoying, but... Um... Okay, so he stopped me from dropping there. Um... Silver climbs toward the center of the board. Surely by now I've walked into some fork. I just haven't seen it yet. Like a gold fork is going to ruin my day eventually. But not today.
40秒I'm sorry, I said a gold fork. By capturing that, he actually captures a silver, not a gold. So a silver fork is going to ruin my day. But not yet. Give it time. <laughs> uh, we got all the animals today. Yeah, I just want my turn to attack. Like, yo, know, taking material is great and all, but when do I get to attack? When, like, I split up his castle. That was fun. Like, he builds these really solid things that I don't see a way to disassemble. We'll find a way in, but it, it, just give it time. I did wonder when and where this lance would enter. Um, that's risky. That's risky, because I can lance drop right back at him. Um. Sure, let's promote. Why not? So, the plan is if this gold steps aside, I gold drop right next to the king. Well, actually, that very likely that's mate. Um, so, I'm expecting gold takes lance. Um, so, for many turns, he's been trying to promote this rook on the fourth file, and it, I'm just saying no. No promotion for you today. Um He'll eventually find a way in, but hopefully I'll break his castle before that happens. So the rook is the only... well, I'm sorry, the gold and silver both support each other. So I was about to comment about his castle being vulnerable is extremely untrue. Um, I need to temper myself a bit um, and think through the consequences of my actions before I play my moves. <sighs> it's just difficult. Like in chess, you just be winning. In shogi, you have to actually try throughout the whole game can't take this stuff for granted like I'm trying to do. In a way that's beautiful and in a way it's kind of ugly. Um... So I keep gradually menacing my way toward his king. Eventually we're going to get there, and it's just going to be hellfire. Um, we're still not there yet, but man, are we getting close. Kind of reminds me of Starcraft. And then you just gradually... Okay, well, we got a not-like-this-face. I mean... Not sure exactly what that's about. But yeah, this reminds me of StarCraft, that like you just gradually cross the map, unless you're good. If you're really good, you just uh, attack and win. But if you're a noob, you just gradually work your way up the map and crush everything in sight. Um, so even beginners can enjoy StarCraft. Um, 
30秒I mean, yes, I did accidentally forget about the fork here, but I think I'm fine. Pretty sure I'm going to survive. <laughs> Even if I give away the gold and let him promote, which I probably am not going to do. Probably just going to offer the exchange of horse for a rook. Oh, he didn't even want that. He's dedicated to this attack. Um, okay. Wow. That's bold. That's a strategy. Um, I don't understand. That's such a cowardly move on my part. I'm playing all the cowardly moves today. So I think what this means is that my rook in the corner was just an extremely terrible move. Yeah, I was afraid of that. This is such a heavy defense. Such an extremely slow and heavy defense. Um, Yeah, I suspected that would happen, and I didn't read out every other variation. Because I was, like, extremely confident he would play this. And this just looks extremely winning for me. Um... <laughs> 
it's not quite checkmate. It smells a lot like checkmate, but it's a lie. Actually, I could take the silver back here. I still don't see a mate there. So I've got all the ranged pieces. Any attack he could do is going to involve golds and silvers. Um, so hopefully I should be able to defend myself. That said, why do I need to defend in a position like this? And dropping pieces near my king might only slow my attack. I need this knight. I can't leave that unattended near my king either. So my king has an escape route should the king require that. Um. Oh, here's the plan. Knight drop here, sack for the knight, and then drop the other knight for mate on either of these two squares. There's a plan, and it doesn't involve the king running all over the board. Now here, are there other plans? Like, how about this knight check? The uh, king runs, and I don't see what to do about the running king, because I don't have a gold in hand. I don't have a metal piece in hand. Um, but yeah, surround the king, and then checkmate it. So here's the surround. If he pushes the pawn, um, that actually doesn't give his king liberty. So the threat is to take the knight, and then drop this knight, and then gold, gold, mate. Uh, actually, sacking the rook for the knight is probably the better way to go. Because that way this horse covers the 7-9 square. Uh, if I sack the rook, gold takes, then what? I didn't think that through. Should have thought that through. <laughs> you would not imagine this to be difficult, but somehow I find a way to make it difficult. Okay, I don't need that knight, actually, because there's another knight I can take. Let's take this knight. Uh, 
I tried to read out all that super complicated stuff where I could just take this knight, and if he checks me, I just run away and mate him. We'll just say that was the plan all along, and that somehow I saw that. Um, yeah, this is definitely the way to go. So he's got to stop both of my knight drops. And I guess the only way to do that is with a gold drop here. <sighs> Why is there always something? Why is Shogi so interesting? <laughs> right, so we're going to have to run away. So he has actually surrounded my silver. And the only piece that could take my silver would be this gold. The one he needs to support a mate threat if he's going to make one. Um, but yeah, he did surround my silver. Uh, so I messed up. I made this way too interesting. Right, I missed that. So, what do we do now? Man, I suck at this. Okay. Now I'm mad. <laughs> uh, it took that much for me to get mad. All right. I see. The goal of the game is to make all the pieces like this deep blue color, right? That is the object, right? Just asking for a friend. Okay, well, that was an adventure. Um, good game. Yeah, I sense that I missed something. 
I uh, sense that I've got to practice some sumo. Uh, thanks. Nice castle. Honestly, that was a good castle there. Um, that and I need to learn how better to attack it. Um, but yeah, we finally found a way in. So, yay us. Oh, sure. All right, yep. So it's possible, like, my move ordering stuff might not be perfect. Um, again, I need to remind myself, like, not to panic when this sort of thing happens, and that it's actually okay to bring my silver up and my rook over and oppose on the third file. Um, I tend to panic here, and I, just doing that leads to this messy, messy thing. Although, here it did work out. I've had previous games where it did not work out. Oh. Hmm. So, I, I kind of liked this bishop drop, to be honest. It made me uncomfortable. Uh, if I'd taken the right knight, we maintained initiative by checking the king. When drop. Oh! Okay. Yeah. I think this is. Uh, challenging for me already. Um, um, possibly my pawn to 4-5 um, encouraging this exchange just gets uh, me in trouble. I don't know. It was kind of interesting how it played out, but I, in theory, I don't think this is great for me. And probably I need to just move my silver up to 3 4, or 4 3, and then bring my rook over to 3 2 to oppose their rook. Um, and I need to time that all better. Yeah, at least it led to an interesting game. Like, all this um, theory of when... Yeah. Yeah, this is what I kind of expected. Um, although I get to promote a horse, but it's not the greatest horse in the world. Uh, to me, this was pretty murky. But my horse is kind of trapped back there. Actually, no, you just straight out trap it for a gold. My mistake. Oh, I am trapped. Uh, this is not great. Hmm. Uh, huh. So yeah, my whole concept that I read ahead here actually is just mistaken. It wasn't my intent to set a trap, but... I guess that's what I had ended up doing. Uh, agreed. Yeah. I need to keep remembering that this bishop promotion he's talking on 3-3 here is pretty strong. So yeah, I can't open the diagonal so early, especially not as Gota. Six nine five nine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.
Yeah, I think here I am now better. Um, this is just mistimed. Like, you had a good position. And thing uh, at this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. Right, so I've been trying to read, like, what do I try to do here? Um, so there are several ideas. Uh, one that occurred to me was, could I just drop this here? Like, this is probably the craziest way to do it. Um, but if it works, it's great. I just don't know if this is any good. I suppose this position is complicated anyway. Um, but, yeah. I mean, they're indicating pushing the second foul pawn, but I don't know if that's going to save them. Uh, so what might I try here? Yeah, I like that. Um, hmm. I don't know, maybe I take this? I'm not entirely sure about that. And then I can oppose right there. Possibly there's other ideas too, but this way my horse gets pretty active. Like, there might have been a rook drop on the second file too, but he might have had a pawn in her position that messed it up. I mean, if you do this, uh, I win your rook. Gotta be careful. Um, really? Is this a thing? So I've got both rooks now. They've got both bishops, and now I just attack. Yeah. Like, is this really a thing? I suspect and there's some other openings where having both bishops is fantastic. Here I'm not so sure. Although their castle's pretty good. I just think they could have had... well, I don't know. It's complicated. Alright, we'll take this free piece. Um, so we're slowly surrounding this bishop. I guess they did force open this diagonal so they could threaten to take my lance. Um. Oh, that's legal. Yep. Man, their attack never slows down. Every move is an attacking move with them. 
That's pretty special. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that either of those actually helps their... Well, maybe that would help, and then they can sack more pieces and further disrupt my generals. But I don't know. I do not know. I'm not sure. It looks playable. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, your advantage is gone. Yeah. Yeah, whatever initiative you had um, is now run out. So, somehow by some miracle, my generals are holding things together. I guess, hmm, they never really finished their castle. I don't know. Is this considered a finished boat castle? With just, like, two king moves and one general move? Is that considered finished? Maybe. Um. Oh. Wait. This was possible, wasn't it? I completely missed this. Huh. So, yeah, they do recover um, the bishop. That's interesting. So, I guess I have to do something like this. This looks scary. Oh, wait. This might not be good. Oops. Uh, this doesn't quite work. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. Um, so, I don't know. Do I have to sack the bishop back here? Maybe this is how it should have played out. It's not really great for me, is it? It's all because I, like, blocked my bishop and trapped my rook. Or something. Somehow I ended up in this position where none of my pieces can move. On the other hand, um, if I sack my knight... Yeah... Sacrificing material and being unable to start an attack is scary. So, uh, but yeah, that. Forcing the exchange would have benefited or profited them in some way, but um, yeah, here I give them one pawn. And so my knight has somewhere to go. Um, I 
to deny this rook promotion idea. Right. Yeah, so I've got all this covered. That's actually pretty hard for him to break in. So he basically has to sacrifice a pawn to, or exchange, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's just fortunate. Although, my bishop in the uh, corner is unhappy. This one right here. So, yeah. Yeah. Likely I should have just pushed uh, the edge pawn like that and this. That would have been a smarter way to activate my bishop to somewhere useful instead of getting my stuff trapped in the corner. That is cool, though, Ashen's point, that later in the endgame, um, if I'd taken the knight, I could have attacked fast enough that they'd never get the gold drop in. Um, I should have thought more about that. Um, well, when you trade pieces, things speed up. I learned... Uh, learned that by playing uh, Don level players. Yeah. Uh, so, so be careful about trading pieces before castling. I've learned me a thing or two about defense. <laughs> um, yeah, they say the best defense is good offense, but also just like because of the way Shogi works and when you do your offense, like things get crazy. Maybe delaying the attack is sometimes worth it. Um, Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but it looked too fun. Yeah, in hindsight, like, just protecting my knight would have been a lot saner than going into this stuff. But, man, I wanted a chance to start attacking. I wanted to see what it's like to break down a castle. Uh, the, uh, the knight sack, so, like, um, but also the rook drop. I think both of them were just ill-advised. So, I, yeah, I didn't know what to do. I think once I sacked the knight, I felt committed to attacking. And the general principle of attacking here makes sense, but it's not so easy to break Boat Castle. I mean, the target's over here, and I just haven't lined up with it yet. I guess I could have uh, defended my knight. That way, if he gets his pawn out of hand, um, then I'd just be able to attack at my leisure, understanding he'd never have a pawn to drop against me. Yeah, 
I don't know. Maybe. There's a lot that's positive about this. I just think it could have been better. Even here, there are decisions to make that I'm just... I don't know. There is no need for me to hurry the Rook drop. If anything, retreating this bishop... or retreating this horse here might be effective too. Yeah. Not sure why I picked uh, the rook drop instead. That was pretty weird. But yeah, we've got so many threats here. So we've got this threat, we've got this threat. Um, we've got maybe threats to pick off additional material. Um, Yeah, this would have been convincing. Um, there's not a whole lot they can do to stop it. Somehow I thought they'd be able to block both of my horses. And in the game they did, so like, um, I guess I was right, but my thinking's still wrong. Even though they can block this diagonal and prevent me from attacking on the diagonal, they can block off the right side and defend that. Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess I even have this, too. Um, or I've got all these things. So many threats. And, of course, I pick the worst one. <laughs> the least effective one. <laughs> uh, at the time I rook dropped the rook, I tried to think of alternatives. I was a bit stressed. Um, and I figured... I wasn't so much convinced that I was right, but convinced that I needed to learn how to play an attack as if I were confident for once. Usually I'm just faking it, and today I faked it too. But yeah, I think if I practice more Sume, I'll just have confidence and understanding to go with it. Yeah. Yeah, this should have been good. I was so confused here. Um, I really was. Hmm. Maybe my lance is on the wrong square anyway. Yeah, it should be like there. Yeah, nice counter attack. Um, He had to find a counterattack out of nothing, and he did. And well done on that, but geez. So yeah, I played two mistakes in a row. In chess, that's a common pattern. In shogi, I don't know. I assume it is, but I really don't know. I don't have the experience yet for that, to know whether two mistakes in a row is common or uncommon. Yeah. You had an initiative, but uh, when it runs out, my attack is strong. 
S-T-R-O-N-G, not wrong. Um, so yeah, usually players try to temper their attack a little bit, so it's not like all in like this, but... And this, to this player's credit, they did build a castle, and it was a very nice castle. But yeah, there's a lot of floating pieces, so... Yeah. It almost worked. <laughs> and I've got... I need to practice endgames. That was quite an outcome. But yeah, we finally found a way through. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? There's so much everyone needs to practice. But yeah, I say that both for the sake of, yes, I very much need to practice, but also, like, what do you want me to say in this analysis? Because, like, yes, we both made mistakes, and by endgame practice, we'll both learn to make fewer mistakes, but... Um, it's just going to take time, and a lot of it. Also, yeah, maybe if I could learn to do, use my pawns more effectively in the middle game, it wouldn't come down to an endgame attack every time. Thought that might occur. Um, so yeah, what might I have done here? I wonder. I think I just intended this. Because even if like he gets a promoted bishop. Or even if he gets a bishop and then manages to promote it, I think I'm fine. But um, I'm not sure that I know how to checkmate that king. And a rook drop would be pretty nice for me against this. Because he can't put a pawn in the way. He's out of pawns and lances to drop. Although he can get one pretty soon, can't he? Uh, yeah. Well, that, I don't understand why you would do that. Um, that seems risky. Ah, I suppose uh, you are out of pawns to defend with. <laughs> so yeah, the rook's got to defend, because... Uh, there aren't any pawns left. Oops, no, that's no good. Um, uh, what now? Yeah, it's hard to read out anyway. If I only had a plan. <laughs> um, here he was thinking about. Actually, yeah, if I just. Well, okay. So I take the gold, I guess.
Yeah, me too. Although, I didn't see mate. Like, it's tempting to think about it, but I don't see how it could mate here. Ah, Shimon entered to save us all. <laughs> uh, we need an experienced player to tell us, like, how in the world I break this castle. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait, no, you can't do that here. Come on. Really? This can't be right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to take this way. Um, okay. No, 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 not, well, it might work, but I like this one. I mean, yeah, Shimon's not wrong that there is a mate there, too. So he can't take the silver. Oh. Ah, that's what I missed. Okay, so yeah, I could have sacrificed there, and it would have just crushed instantly. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well, I almost saw it. Can I get, like, partial credit for that? But, yeah, okay. At least I had decent intuition putting the rook here, trying to find something. I didn't spend my time very well, but I don't think I would have found it. Like, we saw how many minutes after the game, even with my opponent's help, I resisted and said, like, no, that's not right. So, I don't think I would have found it in Bioyomi. I just need to practice more. I had the right intuition. Just having this side of the castle fold, being able to break in, start sacrificing things, I just didn't see the mate. But yeah, there's a mate there. So that's pretty cool. Good luck. A uh, luck in other games. How is it that I'm dyslexic with a keyboard? Like, I'm thinking one thing and typing a different thing. That's aphasia, not dyslexia. I don't know. So I'm, uh, I'm actually somewhat distracted, even in my speaking. Uh, see you around. Cool. All right, um, I think that concludes our post-game analysis there. Um, I might do a little bit of additional post-game analysis, just in case I can think of anything else worth showing on our video. So, yeah, I commented earlier, um, so when they climb this, when they're intending a quick third file attack, I need to play this. And then when they switch there, I can oppose that. This is what I've studied. This is what I should play. Yeah. At least... Uh, I could be misremembering this. Um, okay, so I, I am remembering this correctly. Yeah, when they play this... Intending to play that, but not before they play it. But once they have this climbing, or once they have it here... Like, that's the time for me to push this. And... Uh, I think what confused me is that last time I studied it, I'd studied it this way, and I hadn't realized that there's the same reason here, there's the same quick third file rook idea, and that's why you want to have this prepared. Uh, so yeah, that's how I flubbed the opening and ended up like bishop exchanging, but otherwise this is a good game. Uh, okay, we have a comment. Let's take a look at the comment. 
Um, oh, not the only option, but I don't even have to push the center pawn, but both are okay. I don't even have to push, you're talking about this? Push what? Uh, I'm confused. Oh, the silver. I don't have to push the silver at all. Okay. Huh. Okay. Oh! This would jive with what I've been seeing in other... Uh, where did I see this? Somebody was saying, like... Okay, not until he goes for Sleeve Rook. Okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah, somewhere else I saw a video, I think, where somebody had suggested one of the ideas is to, like, push this and push this and this. Um, I don't recall what this was, but I think this was Hidechi, in fact. I'd have to find it. Um, so this is one way to play it. Okay, yeah, this is a way to play this. Um, yeah, my bishop exchange uh, had tactical flaws in it. Move order uh, makes a ton of difference. Okay. So, yeah, I need to become familiar with these move orders. Here, gold 5-2 is fine. Okay. So let me just get this move order. So if we go here, here, here. So if they build a boat, and I bring my bishop up, and then we have this. In this position, gold 5-2 is fine. And then you are indicating this. Um, okay, and then we can silver climb here. Or we could push the silver here. It's not a climb, it's just pushing it. Wait, oh, wow. Okay, I see. Interesting. In so many other positions, I've gotten hosed going into this. Oh, right, right, because there's this thing. I forgot about that. Um, so... I'm still forgetting something. If I take here... Um, okay, I should just straight up take that here and silver takes I assume and then I take this and yeah bishop drop does not ruin me here okay huh okay yeah actually I can't find a way for them to break in so he's forced to do the bishop exchange I was always afraid that he might not be forced to, but yeah, he is forced to do that. And therefore, um, okay, so we do silver take. Yeah, because we need to cover this square here. Oh, I'm sorry, we also need to cover the head of this, of course. This is what we're really fighting for. Right, and so this silver has to peel away from the attack. And it's a game. Okay, that's right. Thanks. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh! Ah, sure. Silly me, I forgot in this interface I could hand over. I should be able to hand over this hat. Uh, here we go. And he can demonstrate things. Let me zoom this slightly for the purpose of the video. Um, so. Oh, hey, Garlic. Uh, it's going fine. I'm much more awake than yesterday. <laughs> I think yesterday we were talking about stockfish. That was good fun. Uh, this is a mistake from Senta. Right, this variation where they push the edge pawn. If silver is here. Oh, okay, I see. 
then you can climb directly. <laughs> you can hope. Now the pawn pushes bad for goat. Right, because you need the silver to recapture the bishop. Yeah, we need... Oh, okay, yeah, that was the name of it. Saginomia. This is what Hidechi's video was. It was cool. So yeah, we need the silver here for this, uh, for that, and then if I remember right, um, Hidechi was saying this next. I might misremember, but um, yeah, here Usually this is done with the other silver. Oh, this one. Okay, well, not that one, but... Um... Right, so normally there'd be something defending the left side of the board against all manner of drops that I haven't... Makes sense. Uh, the left side is weak. Uh drops and promotions yeah oh I see it would normally be on 4 8 to protect 3 7 okay yeah because this way my threat on 3 7 is just forever there um like here here uh, yeah I'm threatening to promote on 3 7 Usually this bishop drop is needed, right? That, well, usually I like dropping on this bishop anyway because my king's on this line. Um, but yeah, it's um, pretty great. Yeah, nice. Uh, I should rewatch uh, Hidechi's. Uh, lectures about this. This is the more subtle one. Okay. Oh, huh. Never seen this before. That is clever, though. It defends, uh, yeah. Defends some soft spots that are otherwise difficult to defend and also attacks toward the head of the king. Interesting. Shaman knows it better in the standard oblique lines, though. Oh, so there is still room for nuance here. Oh, so okay, I defer moving my king until... Well, the move order so far doesn't matter so much. Okay, yeah, now they're climbing this... For them, it's their left-hand silver. For me, it looks like it's on the right. Yeah. Thank uh, goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I can just escape the first 24 moves without getting mated. It's pretty nice. Okay, so Lance, Silver Pawn. Oh, wow. I've tried the sixth foul pawn before. I don't know it very well, but yeah, I kind of like this fifth foul pawn idea because I've not tried it yet. I've tried the rest of these, and they're all good. It's just I'm not so familiar with them.
Hmm. That's interesting how, like, Senta's attack is just sitting there. Kind of in stasis. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, Hidechi has at least a three-part series about this, and I've just not had time to get into it. I mean, I did watch some of it, but I was not um, fully paying attention while watching. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent uh, starting point for me. Yeah. I figure as, uh, as long as I'm a Q level player, reasonable positions are good. Oh wow, that is a nice tactic. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, so you could push, you could drop that, then push these two pawns, and then break, and like this. Yeah, that's cool. I need to watch that again. Oh, this is a thing? Okay, I guess it makes sense. Because, like, Senta's, like, stalled their attack a bit. Well, this is cute. Makes sense. It's not obvious how Senta continues. Yeah, this, if they had a pawn in hand, this would be terrifying, but they don't. Yep, will do. <laughs> Increasingly, Eriko has been publishing some videos about just general middle game tactics for a fourth file rook. So, uh, although this wouldn't fall in there. There was some touching on a right hand fourth file rook also, but, um, which I guess would be sixth file or something, I don't know. Yeah, very cool. Just have to find time to watch the damn videos, but they're all good. Yeah. But again, like, since I'm still a Q-level player, I probably need to practice end games more than I do openings, and it's okay for me to have some errors, because I'm going to learn from them anyway. It's just going to be painful when I do. I'll get super salty about it and come back and play better next time. That's kind of how it's been going. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that looks complicated. But, yeah, I played this stuff because I enjoy complicated positions where I don't have to know every single move order to get out to move 20. After move 20, move ordering could be interesting, but before then, I'd rather not because there's just too much. <laughs> yeah. But at least I can get this far. Uh, yeah, I've had my fair share of terrible positions. And maybe this is a reason not to play this sort of thing. I don't altogether, but I just rather try to handle these than handle 
the absolute insanity that is Ibisha. Um, so, anywho, yeah, that's definitely cool opening theory. We'll have to keep that in mind for next time. So, uh, yeah, thanks for Shimon for this mini lesson here. Whoops, alright. Um, so, uh, um, Muranaka do a very different attack lately, too. I've missed his latest video again, I've been busy. What was it? The Bishop Exchange. Fourth foul rook. Huh. I think I saw that, but again, I've uh, not been completely focused on the video while watching it. There's just a lot to keep track of if you're not paying very active attention. Yeah, so, let me see. Okay, cool. Oh, that one. Yeah, then his uh, next analysis <laughs> video was deep. Yeah, there's a lot to cover there, and you could watch that a few times and learn new stuff each time from it. Yeah. So we're going to plug everybody's videos at this point. <laughs> Who else have we forgotten to plug? Yeah. Um, yeah, Ash and Silver Wolf had his whole Ibisha lesson yesterday. And if you get a chance, uh, watch Shogi Harbor giving him a lesson about that. I don't know. Who else do we plug? No one ever else plays fourth file rook bishop exchange in a Q rank on 81 Dojo. Well, uh, uh, I can worry about that later, I suppose. Yeah. And when I say I'm going to worry about that later, of course, um, if I get paired with Shimon, I'll have to, like, think of something. I don't know. We'll figure something out. You never know who you get paired with. Um, so, yeah, we had a game that we were analyzing. Uh, there's a lot of opening theory. Um, oh, Hidechi doesn't cover it, so none of the English guys know anything. <laughs> well, that's a quick way to rack up all the points, then. You just play stuff that people haven't studied. But, yeah, see if you can get, like, the theory to spread. If you do this in a teaching ladder, people will remember it. <laughs> yeah. Grind the... Yeah. Uh... It's not on purpose. I'm just trying different openings. Some uh, day I'll know them all. But yeah, it'd be cool if like somehow the interface kept your openings somewhat separate. Or you kept your ratings separate by openings somehow. Um... Shimon leaving host's position. Okay, I guess we're giving him the hat again if he wants to analyze stuff. Um, I don't really know what we're looking at, but I wasn't sure what I was looking at either. This is going to be a long video when I highlight this. <laughs> oh yeah, Shimon's pretty great. Yeah, there's a lot to look at. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. During the game, I kind of regretted what I played. Um, I 
had a previous game where I did this, and I don't remember what went wrong, but it wasn't at this phase. It was at some other phase where things just went very south. But yeah, this is good. Um, uh, I remember now. So yeah, so I was concerned about... And I don't know, like, I should be concerned about this or not. Maybe this is nothing. So, like, I saw this, this, and then you repeat it. Okay, I guess this is good. Don't know where my bishop goes. Uh, bishop's gonna go somewhere eventually, but uh, yeah. So they retreat back here. I mean, maybe they don't do that immediately, but maybe they do. I have no idea. Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. Um, well, no, I can't, like, uh, with my pawn on 6-4, I can't bishop drop at 6-4. cool yeah so if I wanted that you get the free pawn move there or if I wanted a bishop exchange like Senta gets to move to pot 5-5 five five for free so that's different yeah there's a variety of good ways to conduct attacks here um, it's strange like what gains and what doesn't gain a tempo Right, yeah, no, that's fairly reasonable. Oh, I see. I can get the pawn in hand this way. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I previously had something very similar, and I'm like, I can't manage to break on the third file without a pawn. But here, yeah, it's certainly possible to get the pawn. You move the lance, push this, push that, all this stuff. I could potentially even just sack the lance here. Oh, well, I guess not. I mean, I did see that. I struggle evaluating these things, because I never know, like, which attack is worth what. But even though I have kind of learned the values of the pieces, like, there's never a value given to the initiative. Oh, and the rook's locked down here. Oh. Yeah, with, my, with the bishop exchange having taken place, and... Yeah, since uh, their silver is on 5-7. Uh, yeah, that's an enormous pawn. Whereas if, like, if instead they'd moved this silver here and this one out. Yeah, if they'd uh, use the other silver... Uh, they might be able to attack. Yeah, maybe. It does break the castle a bit, but maybe that's doable. Rook prefers to be on 
unless like the third file is immediately breaking. Yeah, I've lost quite a few games to the second file breaking open and the rook promoting and like you say it's all on a razor thin edge but at least this way I get uh, out of the first 20 moves or so without having to know all the move orders. Yeah, right side's the battlefield. Yeah, so it just depends on my ability to play on that side of the board. It's a matter of time until I finally get a grasp of how to defend against each one of these, but one step at a time. Well, I should see what other tournament games I still have to play, since I'm in way too many tournaments at the moment. <laughs> Ouch. So this is why Shyamon's available to give us this expert uh, analysis. <laughs> uh, wow. That hurts. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I'm playing the Tarni to show it on. I'm playing um, the Teaching Ladder. I'm playing the Supernova because I'm under 1500. And now I joined the Shogi Hall tournament. So this is exciting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's too much for me to, uh, two with one O, keep up with. 81 Dojo's Tournament Manager software is great and informs me about schedule ETC. So, oh, the British thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ah. Yeah, I did remember seeing like they had some European tournament for European players. I guess they have a British tournament for British players. Makes sense. Why not? Or maybe, I don't know. There's too much to know. If you go to 81 Dojo's main page, like, the top of the page has about seven or eight links on it, and one of them is the tournament system. You can see there's a zillion tournaments going on. So, if you join all of them, you'll eventually learn something. But also, some degree of study would probably help. Oh, the mind sport open. Oh, cool. Yeah. Maybe I should join this mind sport open and just, like, get my mind opened and just fall out of my head. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Best British player is the de facto 2020 British champ. Oh. Wow. Well, that, the stakes are high, then. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Like, you might get knighted for that sort of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing you don't get knighted for that. But imagine if you could. Maybe they let you, like, hold the crown jewels or something. I don't know. God save the queen. Uh, tail for two is a three don yes this is true he <laughs> likely he's a shoe in to win it okay well we'll see 
Ah. Uh, maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, I'm being silly at this point, but like... What else can I say about Britain? I don't know. Yeah, so we hit some erroneous opening play. Yeah, let us see. Um, if takes, takes. This, this. This doesn't look terrible. Oh, well. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna be thinking about that for a while. That's cool. I think in general, that's a good place to put it. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it's awful. At this point, like, I'm better, for sure. Uh, it's Q level play. You have to enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I guess he missed this part of the game, and even though, like, he skimmed through the opening, like, yeah, that's fine. So many things are missed this game. Uh, what? Are we sure about this? Are we sure we're sure about this? That seems extremely dangerous. It might be okay, but yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. So even though uh, I consider this but assumed uh, gold ticks, yeah, and forgot that um, a tempo can be worth a pawn. Yeah, this tempo is definitely worth a pawn. Like, you just repeat the tactic, and what does he do? This time, if gold takes... Um, I mean, this has got to be crushing. Ha, nice. Probably rook takes a second time. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, this is just... I get a fierce initiative here. Probably don't want to face this. GG. <laughs> yeah, that's just... Um, and what do you do against this kind of attack? I don't know. Also, how do I checkmate here? <laughs> Where's my mate? <sighs> yeah, taking the lance seems best. Even though it doesn't mate, but I don't have a mate. I 
I guess usually this is to be somewhat feared because of the silver move, but like I've got so much material. Oh right. Uh, in the game, I was thinking this was great. Here, it's even better. This is amazing. So yeah. So I guess. Uh... Yeah, like I was saying, I don't think they would go. I don't think they would play gold takes twice. They might do it the first time to gain the pawn, but. The second time, I'm guessing they'd be willing to exchange their rook for my horse and just see how things go. Yeah, this is just over. Yeah, it's going to mate. There's, like, no defending this. It's uh, implausible that Senta could save this. I mean, if you're in this position, you have to find a move, but still. Like, finding moves is extremely hard. Um, I don't know about that. Why not mate? That's a cute mate, though. <laughs> uh, gotta make two Q someday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get our way back up the rating ladder at some point. Uh, in fairness, that's a really unusual... Yeah. Yeah. I'll make it up there again. Yeah, this is just indefensible. There's no way to save it. Um, it is interesting as a thought exercise to make an attempt to save it, but... Um, oh! Oh wow, that is cool. Yeah, so he's gonna surrender his gold, I guess. He's willing to. Um, I don't see a way to surround the king. Yeah, I just have to take it. Except that you're only up 35 pieces. Um, I guess here now we do this sort of thing. Threatening that. But yeah, there's just no saving this. It, um, Gota's material advantage is enormous. Um, no, no. Let's, let's mate. I'm actually getting kind of good at this. Right, exactly. Oh boy. I don't know, take the rook, I guess. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Like, this is what I saw. You take the knight with check. And you're up a zillion pieces and still giving check. So, even if it's not mate, like, yeah. Yep. There's nothing for Gota to fear here. Uh, that horse, uh, plus dragon winning the gold 
that's cool. And that worked because there was not a legal pawn drop to block the horse's check. Usually you can interpose something, but there, because there was already a pawn on the fourth file, you couldn't drop another pawn to block the horse check. So, yeah. That would have been an awesome way to end the game. Instead, we got this mediocre stuff where I put the rook down and just it took forever. Yeah. I definitely should have done this. Yes, very heavy. I felt uh, so many moves later just how heavy it was. Although, in my defense, um, that rook eventually helped. But, man, it was, like, way mistimed. Well, yeah, if we get this, this is great. Um, wait, did I have this possibility? I don't remember. Hey, GN, GN. How are you say this? We're just finding every possible checkmate. Um, which is kind of a fun exercise. A lot of players do enjoy finding checkmates, especially in other players' games. Okay, teaching ladder announcement. Um, let's see. Uh, sounds good. Okay, so we're going to have a game in a few hours. I thought I did this reasonably well, but I could have done better. I didn't like that move, but like... Well, actually, I forgot. I could move my gold that was already... Uh, I misread something. Um, so I misread... Uh, like this, holding that. Oh, do I have mate? Mate's hard to find. Four huge pieces right next to the king. I mean, it feels like there should be... Feels like there should be a mate. So, like, I tried this, but, like, this didn't seem good. Okay, so like, is this drop okay, or like, how should I continue? I feel like I'm trolling, but I'm not trying to. Like, I can't put my pawns anywhere. Uh, I want to attack, but I also don't see a means of attack. Other than sacking lots of material. There's got to be something here, right? Okay. So, like, what? Do I, like, put this here or something? I mean, what are you proposing? I can't do that. Maybe this. Yeah, this is probably... Oh, whoops. Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe this here. This might be a way to go. There's 
got to be something. Even with uh, my heavy pieces trapped. I just don't understand. Okay, so I take the knight. Okay. Ah. Yeah, now uh, gold at 5-7 is um, 8. Okay. Yeah, I see. Well. Oh, right. Yeah, now I can actually use my pawns. Duh. So I don't need to be so concerned about this, because it's possible for me to defend. I've never had a lesson on defense, but uh, you usually study it from how do you attack. Because defense ultimately is usually futile, but yeah, here my attack is much faster. Um, <laughs> I guess I take this. Usually you'd want to build the pressure somehow, but I guess this is the way to build pressure. Oh, wait. Hang on, my mistake. I should just, yeah, if this, if this, maybe I just drop here. I guess it comes out to the same thing. Oh, this transposes. This isn't strictly better. Well, maybe it is better, because now my horse can attack, too. Wait, if silver takes, horse takes. Um, yeah, now that's cool. Yeah, so like, this is defended. Oh, you're suggesting I might have a mate already. I did spend some time during the game trying to find a mate. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. I see it now. Two knights are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Mr. Mate and five and one oh two. Oh <laughs> okay. Uh, having two knights in hand is amazing, isn't it? It breaks any castle, or at least this one. Sasuga Shima. <laughs> uh yeah. So it's good to know this stuff, because clearly I don't know it yet. <laughs> ah, so, yeah, we're saying on 102 I missed a mate in 5. What the heck? Um, takes, takes, knight, king, 
Oh. Oh, right. I for I always forget that. Well, I'm sorry. My dragon's already promoted. It's not even a matter of forgetting about that. Yeah, no, I'm just blind. Yep. Alright, this is uh, what's been said, and now I see it. Oh, there's another mate. Wow, that's cool too. Yeah. This is probably the more common form of this. I guess. If there are multiple forms. But yeah, no, that's cool. I did try to find this, I'm just dumb. So that's why I took the other knight instead. Um, thankfully I survived, but yeah, that was... Uh, that was losing a important tempo. We still found a mate. But yeah, it would have been much better in many games. Not necessarily this one, but in many games. Should have just delivered the mate immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, why I didn't sack. Um, like, I saw his attack was marginally too slow here. So I didn't sack for the knight with check. Um, but yeah, if he had, like, a diagonal piece, I might have just gone for it, even though I wouldn't see the mate, like, I'd be forced to find it. Um, but here, yeah, since, uh, yeah, so we're in analysis mode, um, back here I saw... He didn't have a diagonal piece, else I might have done the sack out of necessity. But yeah, I saw, like, in the game, uh, this was the best he could do. Although I didn't see the gold drop immediately, but it does uh, fend off my knight. But, like, here he doesn't have a diagonal piece and I saw that uh, like four moves ago four plies ago in a chess player's parlance this would be two moves ago and shogi we call that four moves uh, so I saw this four moves ago um, that I was fine but yeah what a mess um, so I wonder like, yes, this... Well, I'm sorry. I was panicking because somewhere I thought he had something. But no, these moves are all check. Yeah. Not sure why I had to panic. Ah, uh, Shaiman. Leaving host's position. Let's, if he wants to show anything, we could let him show anything. Otherwise, he might wrap up and pick up another... <laughs> Also mate. Well, that's cool. Wait. Uh, let's see. Rook 88. Wow, that is cool. <laughs> Five in a line. Yeah, that's cool. That would have been an amazing way to finish the game. At that point, you're like, is this player showing off on purpose? But yeah, that is cool. But yeah, the move on 102 that... Oh wait, this is another way to do the move on 102. Right, if they had captured the other way that I was looking at. Um, if they used the silver to take on 88 instead of the gold. Yeah. Let's see, a bit long, but it seems like natural sack. Uh... I need to practice Sumit. 
and like part of the reason i keep mentioning this is because like it's true but part of it's an excuse for like okay yes this is very cool but like what else do you want me to say <laughs> uh, yeah all the sacks look good unless you're the, actually the one in uh, this is 60 second bioyomi and i can't find anything Jeez, I need to work on that. <laughs> Not compatible with Renjo rules. Ignore if you don't play them. Yeah. Well, I hear, like, if you do a pawn drop mate and it's, like, a full moon on a Thursday night or something. Yeah, I hear that's... Uh, well, anyway. Yeah, we're being silly at this point. Uh, thanks for the analysis. Cool. I don't know. Is there a mate? You tell me. This is funny. Back here. Huh. Well, it seems we've attracted the attention of, like, everybody on the server, because we had so many missed mates. <laughs> I did wonder about this during the game. Um, again, I'm chalking this up to I need to practice more sume, but yeah, since we have strong players who can actually figure this out and enjoy this exercise, maybe, uh, to me this doesn't look like mate. Yeah, it's, it's always fun to look for mates, especially uh, when there's a lot of pieces you can use. Uh, yeah, I got, must construct additional pylons. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I I did read out some of this during the game, and I'm like, yeah, I don't have to go for this, so I'm choosing not to. But, um, well, this is actually the mate that I had was later. But yeah, this, there's a lot to consider. And maybe if I just opened the edge file, that would have helped too. But anywho, yeah, it's a lot to look at. This is the longest, um, uh, what's that, fade out? No, wrap up. It's the longest wrap up I've had to a video so far. But there's just a lot to look at, isn't there? Yeah. Cool stuff, though. I should try to uh, see around. I should try uh, getting more tournament uh, games played. Although, yeah, it's like the wrong hour. Although, uh, Supernova players are likely offline. We'll see. I want to watch some more games then. Alright, thanks.